Hello friends, in the last lesson we learned how to find mean of grouped data using assumed mean method. This method is useful when values of observation and frequency is large. This method gives us mean with simpler calculations. I will try to derive the formula of assumed mean method in this video. We will continue with the same example so that you can be assured that all the methods give the same mean. Aryabhatta school arranges a free medical checkup for the students. So here is the data for class 8 students weight. So 40 to 45 kg range there are 6 students, 45 to 50 kg range there are 18 students and so on. Let us find the class mark which is the midpoint for each class. So like 42.5 is the midpoint of 40 to 45 class which is 40 plus 45 by 2 equal to 42.5 and so on. Now we introduce a term called assumed mean denoted by A. It is a median of all the class marks. So here the class marks are in sorted order. So the median value of class marks is 52.5 here. So A equal to 52.5. We would subtract A from each of the Xi. Our goal is to reduce the value of Xi so that the computation is easier. So now we subtract the assumed mean A equal to 52.5 from each class mark. This will give us the difference between Xi and A that is deviation of A from each of the Xi. So we denote it by Di. So for the first row D1 equal to 42.5 minus 52.5 which is equal to minus 10. D2 equal to 47.5 minus 52.5 which is equal to minus 5 and so on. We will then find the mean of deviation that is d bar which is a sum of products fi di divided by sum of frequencies. Why? Because finding d bar is much easier as all the di have small values now. So mean of deviations d bar equal to sum of all fi di divided by sum of frequencies fi. Now each deviation di equal to xi minus a so we will put this value in the equation so d bar becomes sigma fi into xi minus a divided by sigma fi. But how will d bar give us the mean x bar that we wanted to find out? Let us find out. Let us open the sigma sign. Sigma is nothing but summation. So d bar equal to f1 into x1 minus a plus f2 into x2 minus a plus f3 into x3 minus a and so on divided by f1 plus f2 plus f3 and so on. Now let's open the bracket in the numerator. So numerator f1 into x1 minus a plus f2 into x2 minus a and so on will become f1 x1 minus f1 a plus f2 x2 minus f2 a and so on. On rearranging the terms that is taking all x terms together and terms with a together the numerator will look like f1 x1 plus f2 x2 plus f3 x3 and so on minus f1 a plus f2 a plus f3 a and so on divided by f1 plus f2 plus f3. So f1 x1 plus f2 x2 is same as sigma fi xi and the right side thing f1 a plus f2 a is same as sigma fi a and the denominator is sigma fi. So d bar becomes sum of fi xi divided by sum of fi minus sum of fi into a divided by sum of fi. The left term is the mean x bar that we want to find, right? Sigma fi xi by sigma fi. And the right term is f1 a plus f2 a plus f3 a so on divided by sum of fi. Here we can write the numerator as a times sigma fi and the denominator is sigma fi. So 
the numerator and denominator sigma fi cancels we are left with a on the right term so d bar equal to x bar minus a d bar equal to x bar minus a so x bar will be d bar plus a so this there is a very simple relation between mean of deviation and mean which we want to find finding d bar is very easy as we have reduced the values of di so assumed mean method is very efficient and time saving when f xi and fi are large values to revise all you need to do is find a which is the median value of all the xi find deviation xi minus a for each row then product of fi and di for each row then sum all of them and divide by frequency you will get mean deviation that is d bar and add it with a the assumed mean which you took to get the x bar so that's all in this video bye bye